It has been a long time in the making, but the dedication and research that you have put into crafting your story's world are nothing short of impressive. As is the attention you have given to each of your supporting characters, imbuing them with intriguing backstories and colorful quirks, such that they are as complex as they are memorable. Likewise, the main antagonist is magnificently bombastic, yet beautifully human, betraying glimpses of the man he used to be back before cruel fate thrust him down a dark path. Yes, nothing has escaped your eagle authorial eye, and yet you can feel it. There is something wrong. Then suddenly, in the light of the polished quality of the rest of the story, you realize that, ironically, you have neglected your main character. For, while neither bad nor poorly written, your hero is somehow unfortuitously generic in an otherwise sterling cast of characters. Yes, despite all your planning, he has come down with a bad case of generic protagonist syndrome. Greetings, good storytellers. I am the artful narrator, and it is my privilege to welcome you to learning the tropes of writing. Now, much to my chagrin, several of my main characters have suffered from generic protagonist syndrome. And so it is that I want to raise awareness for this debilitating ailment. So if you, or a loved one, have a main character that has been afflicted by generic protagonist syndrome, know that you are not alone and take solace in the fact that you caught it early on, while it is still easy to treat. Many heroes with generic protagonist syndrome go on to have their stories filmed or published before the ailment is discovered. Now, make no mistake, these stories can still be quite good. However, under close examination, we find that, because of generic protagonist syndrome, the main character is often the least memorable part of his own story. President Business, we're trying to locate the fugitive, but his face is so generic it matches every other face in our database. Diabolical. Now, I strive to keep these videos positive and refrain from using negative examples whenever possible. So, there will be no examples of generic protagonists here, either in video clips or discussion. Just trust me that they do exist, and you likely have seen them, even if they were so forgettable that they left no lasting impression upon you. Haven't we seen each other somewhere before? I don't think so. I'm not sure I'm seeing you now. It must be something I ate. So, let us consider several possible causes and treatment options. Now, I postulate that this dilemma might stem from the nature and role of the protagonist, and how we as writers may sometimes develop his character in relation to the rest of the story. For instance, we know that the side characters will not have as much time devoted to them, so we endeavor to make them shine brightly in the brief time that they have. Likewise, as it is often the privilege of the villain to drive the plot, and thus create the challenge for the protagonist, it behooves us to lovingly construct the villain's character ahead of time to ensure that the story is vivid and worth telling. Whereas, in our minds, the protagonist is often designed to have a long character arc in which he develops over the course of the story. And although his airbending skills are great, he has a lot to learn before he's ready to save anyone. 
but I believe Aang can save the world. And with this in mind, we may wind up constructing his arc in reverse, envisioning him in his fully fleshed out form as he will appear at the story's conclusion, and then undertaking the process of rendering him more bland and ordinary, so that when we first meet him at the start of the story, he has areas to improve. A side effect of which can potentially leave us stuck with a less than stellar protagonist for the majority of the story. However, just because she may start off as ordinary does not mean that she cannot also be remarkable. If it helps, do not think of the protagonist as growing from a place of lack into her new role as a hero, but rather think of her transforming from one equally interesting version of herself into another, more capable iteration. Such was the case for Mr. Bilbo Baggins of Bag End, who was a very respectable hobbit and never had any adventures. That is, until an unexpected journey transformed him into the guileful burglar who was so bold as to boast of his titles before the dragon Smaug. Another cause of generic protagonist syndrome can be the result of trying to make your protagonist the point of view character for the novel. Now, in most stories, it is highly desirable that the main character should be compelling and distinctive. However, in narratives that instead focus on a larger world and the events therein, it can sometimes be beneficial for the main character to have a bit of the everyman about him so that, while not bereft of personality, his touch of genericness might enable him to act as an avatar for the viewer in an otherwise strange, fantastic, or perhaps even alien setting. This is called the point of view character. However, if you find yourself struggling with the conundrum of requiring a point of view character while still desiring to have a more dynamic protagonist. The simple solution is to split the two. For example, in Guards Guards by Terry Pratchett, Carrot Iron Founderson is presented in part as the point of view character who introduces us to the city of Ankh Morpork and the Night Watch, while it is Sam Vimes who holds the role as the hero and main character of the narrative. Now, generic protagonist syndrome can be abbreviated into GPS, which is rather fitting for my favorite means of ensuring that my main characters are vivid and varied, is to not only know where they're going in their respective character arcs, but perhaps, more importantly, where they have been. Yes, I love characters who, at the time of their story's first installment, have already gone on many adventures and grown rich with experience, intrigue, and the kind of sordid pasts that will doubtless come back to haunt them. It feels so genuine and real to me, because in real life, when you meet someone new, you do not know their entire backstory from the get-go. But rather, as your friendship with them deepens, you slowly learn of the history that made them. Such is the case with Harry Dresden of Jim Butcher's The Dresden Files, whose vague backstory is masterfully elaborated upon in each successive book, resulting in a truly complex and engaging character. But in the end, whether you feel your story is best served by a protagonist who has yet to embark on her first adventure, or a figure who has already seen the world and maybe even saved it once or twice, it all boils down to what themes you want your story to incorporate and with which style you find it easier to work. Just remember when it comes time for you to 
metaphorically hand out interesting backstory and character quirks to your cast. Do not leave your protagonist wanting. For with a little perspective and prevention, you can ensure that he is just as superbly generic or exceptionally fantastic as you want him to be. Thank you very much for watching Good Storytellers. I hope that this video has been informative, or at the very least, a pleasant diversion. Until next time.